Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and this week we are talking Yosemite National Park. Yosemite is one of the top 10 most popular national parks in our country, and this year it's certain to be popular once again. However, if you're going to Yosemite this year, you should know there are a lot of changes to expect. Let me preface this by saying, if you are somebody who has never visited Yosemite National Park before, I don't think this is the year to go. (laughs) I think if you're somebody that you've been before and you've seen the highlights and you're just, you're nearby and it's an easy trip for you, go enjoy. But I wouldn't trek cross country to go there this year because some of these changes are really big and will really impact, I think, the quality of your visit. Yeah, this is a little bit of a weird video because we love Yosemite. However, there's a lot happening this year that you should know about before you go. Yeah, a lot of closures that will impact, I think, the quality of your visit. It's sort of like, you know, the Griswolds when they get to the park and they're like, sorry, folks, park's closed. So what's happening this year that might affect a visit to Yosemite? Well, you're going to have to do some planning to even get in the park. Yosemite is another park that has added a vehicle registration ticket that is required to enter during peak hours. So this year, from May 20th to September 30th, you will be required to have a separate ticket to enter in a vehicle. So this is different than just your ticket to get in the park, you know, your entrance ticket. This is each vehicle must have one of these vehicle registration tickets to drive into the park. So it's just one required per vehicle like the other parks that we've talked about. It's good for three days. You can use that to get in and out of the park as you wish. It's interesting because the people that just want to drive through the park, so some people use the park to access like Highway 395 on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, they will also need a ticket. (laughs) So you can't just drive through the park, even if you're not planning on stopping without one of these tickets. And the tickets cost, what, $2? $2, but you just need the ticket from 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day, May 20th through September. 30th. So if you're willing to get up and drive in before 6 a.m., you don't need a ticket. If you're willing to wait until 4 p.m. to go in, you don't need a ticket. But as you know, if you want to do anything in the park, you need to get there before 4 p.m. And I don't know about you, but I don't really like to get up and be somewhere at 5.30 in the morning. But you know, If that's your jam, you could go in and not have to worry about getting a ticket. These tickets will be available on recreation.gov. 70% of the tickets will be released on recreation.gov starting on March 23rd. So March 23rd, 2022, log on and get your ticket for this season because that's when they're going to be released. The remaining 30% of reservations will be available for seven days prior to each entry day. If you were going to show up at the park on August 23rd, you would need to book it seven days before August 23rd. But if you're going to wait and try to get one of those 30% tickets seven days before your arrival. You need to already have your recreation.gov account created. You need to be logged in and ready to snag your ticket starting at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on the day that your ticket is available because they go extremely fast. So any sort of delay in logging into your account or anything like that could cost you your ticket. Just know if you're going to try to grab those kind of last minute tickets that you need to be on the ball. Early bird gets the ticket. Absolutely. Those tickets are valid for three consecutive days, starting with your arrival date. If you don't arrive on the first day of your ticket, it doesn't matter. Your ticket's only good for the three days starting from day one of your ticket. Don't miss your arrival day because you're just selling yourself short. If you don't have a computer or you're not computer savvy, you can call and make a reservation. That number is 1-877-444-6777. 
but I recommend going through recreation.gov. One other thing that they make very clear in this particular park, if you have a vehicle registration ticket, the person whose name is on that ticket must be in the vehicle and they have to show photo ID. You can't transfer this ticket to a friend. They're very clear about them being non-transferable. So whoever makes the reservation has to be in the car with their photo ID to prove it's them. Apparently they're pretty serious about this. <laughs> Now, not everyone has to have a vehicle registration when arriving at the park. For example, if you're coming in on yarts, <laughs> what is yarts, you may ask? What is a yart? Yarts <laughs> is the Yosemite Area Regional Transportation System, a bus. So if you're coming in on one of the yarts buses, or if you're with an organized tour group, you don't need a vehicle registration, although I'm sure whoever's organizing the tour probably took care of that detail for you. The other people that don't need to worry about a vehicle registration, anybody that has a reservation inside the park. So if you're staying at one of the campgrounds inside Yosemite National Park, you have a, have a reservation for it, that will serve as your entry ticket. If you have a reservation at any of the Yosemite lodging facilities, that will serve as your entrance ticket. If you have a permit to climb Half Dome or any other sort of backcountry permit or wilderness permit, those permits will act as your vehicle registration ticket. So if you have those types of reservations, your ticket is good for three days from the day of your reservation or the length of your reservation. So if you've got a ticket to climb Half Dome, your three days are good for the day that you climb Half Dome and then two days after. If you're staying in a campground, your campground reservation, however long it is, if it's three days or if it's 10 days, that reservation is, is your entry ticket beyond your regular entrance fee. So you don't have to worry about the re vehicle registration in those instances. In addition to needing some sort of ticket or reservation to get into the park, you should know about several closures that are happening. A lot of the campgrounds are closed for renovation. Yeah, so the campgrounds that are going to be closed this year for renovations are Tuolumne Meadows, and I'm sure I'm not saying that right, Tuolumne Meadows, Crane Flat, and Bridalvale Creek. All three of those campgrounds that are RV friendly will be closed this season. And then Porcupine Flat Campground will also be closed, but that's a tent only campground. And what about showers, you may ask? <laughs> I know you were thinking about showers. <laughs> showers are only available to overnight guests of Curry Village and Housekeeping Camp. Yeah, so if you're not staying at one of those campgrounds, then you can't use the shower. So there are going to be some stinky campers yeah. in Yosemite this year. Also, laundry, which is usually available at the housekeeping camp, is closed. So there are no public laundry facilities in the park. Stinky so, campers, stinky clothing. If you need to wash clothes, you're going to be washing them in a the sink or going outside the park to a laundromat. So just be prepared for that situation. There will be shuttle service available in Yosemite Valley with some sort of modified schedule this year. And a modified route. So we suggest checking the website, the National Park Service website for Yosemite, because they'll be updating that information the closer we get to the camping season. The Mariposa Grove shuttle service will be delayed until early June, and the Tulo Lumne Meadows shuttle is tentatively scheduled to run. Tulo Lumne is the proper pronunciation. <laughs> I think it's pronounced Chapatulus. <laughs> Spelled Tuolumne. Pronounced Chapatulus. Tuolumne. I think that's it. So the Tuolumne Meadows Tour and Hikers Bus will run, but reservations are recommended. The Yarts Regional Transit will run, but reservations are recommended. So there are just a lot of changes to not only getting into the park, but then accessing a lot of these different areas. And a lot of these areas are going to be closed. For information regarding all other bus tours or shuttles, I would just check the MPS website constantly because they're constantly updating that. They've already made changes to it in the last couple of weeks. So I think as we get closer to the camping season, they're going to start giving more details on those types of things. And know that campsites can be reserved five months in advance. They will not have any first come, first serve campgrounds this year at all. Typically, when we have visited in the past, we have stayed at 
first come, first serve campsites. Specifically, we stayed at the White Wolf Campground. And that campground is not listed on the park website right now as being reservable or closed. So I don't know what's going on with White Wolf Campground this year. So it makes me think that maybe they're still deciding on that campground. Yeah, I kind of love the White Wolf Campground. That has always been a welcoming space for those of us who like to wing it and show up because it was a first come, first serve campground. And it's a really beautiful campground. And we actually barely fit in that campground. They list the, the length limit for travel trailers as being 24 feet. But we had a park ranger actually tell us to go there because he said we were 25 feet. He's like, you'll be fine. He said, now, if you're 27 feet, I would tell you no. So talk to a ranger and sort of get their idea on that if they are going to even have that campground open this year. Most of the campsites can be reserved five months in advance on recreation.gov. So I would just log in and look at the specific campground you want. There's one campground that sort of had a weird situation this year. It's the North Pines Campground. They actually held a lottery for access to making reservations for that campground and the lottery entry period has already passed. So sorry, we missed the boat on that one. It's my understanding that reservations for North Pines Campground will open to everyone starting March 15th. Those individual sites are released like on a block basis on the 15th of each month. North Pines Campground reservations are very confusing. So if you're wanting to stay there specifically, I would go look at the recreation.gov page and kind of read that through because it's probably the most complicated (laughs) like reservation uh, setup that I've ever seen for a campground. So it's not easy to camp inside the park, especially if you have an RV of any substantial size. There are some private campgrounds located outside the park. There's a couple of small towns, depending on which entrance you come in, because there's a couple of different entrances to Yosemite. Right outside both entrance stations on the west side, there are small towns there that have campgrounds. On the east side, there's not really I wouldn't really call it a town. There are a couple of, I think, like national forest campgrounds, but I'm not sure what the status is of those campgrounds. So if you're interested in staying in those, do your research for those particular ones. So as for resources, all the reservations can be made at recreation.gov. You can also check out the NPS website Mm -hmm. for details about Yosemite. And don't forget about the NPS app, which you can download to your phone. Yes. And I would also tell you to check out the NPS Yosemite specific social media platform. So I would look at their Facebook page, their Instagram page. They're usually pretty good about answering questions on those social media platforms because they have somebody that's kind of managing those on a daily basis. So sometimes you can ask a question there and get an answer almost immediately. There's one other important closure you should know about if you're visiting Yosemite this year, and it's Glacier Point Road. Mm -hmm. And this is really a very important road that is being closed for some sort of renovation. I think they're repaving the entire road. So it's going to be closed to all traffic this year. Why is this road important? Because this is the road that you will take to go to the Half Dome Overlook, which is one of the most famous scenic views in the park. So a lot of people also used to take, there's a bus that you can ride to get to the top of that lookout. And a lot of people would would take the bus up there and then they would hike down into the valley. The hiking trails are still open, but the bus will not be running. So even park buses are not going to be running on that road. So nobody is going to be driving Glacier Point Road this year. So to me, that's a big part of the park that's going to be not accessible. I I think that's a major loss for somebody that's never been in the park before. If you've been before, then it's probably not a big deal. But if you're going for the first time, I personally would wait until that road opens back up because I think that's one of the most gorgeous views in the park. And... I'd hate for you to miss it. And one final closure, the Bridal Veil Falls trails and parking will be closed this year. Yeah, but you can still see Bridal Veil Falls from other points in the park, but you just won't be able to do the hiking trails there or park there. So that's kind of a big deal. I remember when I was a kid, the first time I went to the Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian in Washington, oh, yeah. D.C., I was dinosaur obsessed. And the dinosaur exhibition was closed. Oh, like the, the entire <laughs> dinosaur area was closed for renovation. So I'll never forget that being a kid, not being able to see the dinosaurs of the Smithsonian. I mean, I got to say, you go to Yosemite for the first time, 
you're probably going to want to see that half dome view. Yeah. And I mean, you can still see half dome from other places in the yeah. park, but it's a very different view from Glacier Point Road because you're kind of like eye level with it and you're looking at it across the valley. Right. So it's just really a stunning area. And yeah, it's going to be completely closed. Something else to know about Yosemite and the famous waterfalls. <laughs> you see those waterfalls during certain times of year, yeah. especially earlier in the season. You know, as the snow is melting and running off, those waterfalls are very full. But if you show up late in the season, like mid to late summer, the waterfalls may be thin or non-existent. So it's just something to know if you're going for the first time. So those are the big changes that you're going to see at Yosemite this year. Some of them are pandemic-induced. Some of them are rehabilitation-induced. It just depends. And some of the things, I think, might change as the season goes on. So, again, just check back on the National Park Service website for the most up-to-date information. What we've shared with you is what is happening right now, but that could change. Before you book anything, double-check their website. Sorry, guys. Thus concludes yet another horrible episode. I mean, wonderful episode of... Long, long honeymoon, serving you on the interwebs since 2006-ish. Back when we were little kids. Yep, young whippersnappers. Little young whippersnappers. We're going to be doing some additional episodes about our national parks and the changes that are happening this year because due to the pandemic and all the new campers hitting the road, all of our parks have become more crowded and the parks are changing their policies to accommodate the crowds. Yeah. Give the workers at the entrance stations a break because I think having to manage all of these changes would be super overwhelming. They aren't adding more staff. It's it's usually the same number of people working there, but now they're doing a lot more work. And so it's, you know, tough for them. So just pack your patience and your, you know, sense of humor and yeah, the people who work in our national parks are not doing it to get rich quick. No. <laughs> They're doing it because they love the outdoors and they love our parks. So definitely extend to them some courtesy when you go. Sorry, guys, if you're new to our channel and you're interested in national parks, if you're interested in RV travel, go ahead, click that subscribe button. Join Loloho Nation because we've got a lot of good stuff on tap for this year. Yes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, like it, share it with your friends, leave us a friendly comment down below. And until next time, what do we say? Loloho. Lo